So why don't we start with WICC? Because this maybe gave some some surprises for some folks. It's uh, we had Lyon and Chelsea and Portland Thorns going up against Monterrey Rayadas' first uh, you know appearance in the WICC, and naturally uh, we had both of these games uh, end in regulation in draw. So we had Lyon and I'm Chelsea right. end in a two-two draw. And then we had Portland Thorns and Monterrey end in a 1-1 draw. And so at the end of regulation, going through some things, they had to come down to penalty kicks in these two games. And so as it went to penalty kicks, you had Lyon advancing, and then you had Monterrey advancing as well. So you had Portland Thorns get taken down, unable to do, defend their WICC crowd for 2021. And the final is going to be set up between Lyon and between Monterrey. This is an exciting time. I love it. I was very excited to see uh, Liga MX Feminil teams uh, participate in each of these respective uh, competitions, whether it was WICC or Women's Cup. And, and we're going to talk about that as well. But uh, I feel like it's uh, it kind of matched the energy for me, you know, coming out of July where we saw a lot of suspenseful moments, right, in, in some of these international competitions and to sort of see this kind of boil over into August where there's still this this suspenseful level of play, but it's at, at the international club level. Yeah. Um, and so that's been, been really, really cool for us to sort of witness here. The WICC has been fantastic to watch. I mean, the, this opening night of games on Wednesday um, really made it exciting. I'm so excited for Saturday to watch the final that's happening um, in, in the WICC. But there's so many emotional things happening off the pitch in the WICC because Lindsay Horan, who spent many years at the Portland Thorns, is now playing for Lyon. And she came back to Providence Park. There was a bit of a homecoming for her to see some of her old teammates play in front of the Portland fans um, in Oregon and and for Leon to win. Haran ends up getting a goal on a great set piece. So, like, the emotional factor of this is there and, and truly fantastic. Then in the Portland versus uh, Monterey game, and, and this one also ending a tie, like, the, the football was fantastic. A 2-2 tie between Leon and Chelsea and then a 1-1 tie both of these going into penalty kicks, which just makes it that much more suspenseful. Suspenseful. However, during the Portland game, the U.S. international defender for Portland and midfielder Crystal Dunn entered the booth alongside Lori Lindsay, Jen Hildreth, and they had a little interview conversation about with Crystal Dunn. It was fantastic. It was great for um, her to kind of talk about stuff again and and say how her pregnancy journey was um, giving birth to her son, starting her family, how mom life is. And then most importantly, like when she'll be back on the pitch, because Jen asked that Lori asked that they wanted to know um, she's working on it. She's working on getting back for both club and country. So that was really good to see. But yeah, I mean, this, these late night games were fantastic and so fun to watch. And I am very excited for the final on Saturday. Yeah, same here. I think there's always that layer of when you're looking at at teams who are kind of maybe in that preseason form, you're kind of like, well, what are we going to see here mm -hmm. from, from these teams? And then you have other teams who are currently in season, whether it's a Thorns or Monterrey. So I think it was a really good mix uh, of, of mutual energies, I think, on, on the pitch. So hopefully uh, match day one will lead into some exciting things for the third place match or the final in WICC. You can catch all that action uh, on August 20th. So tune in to see who comes out on top. But that was it's not just club international tournaments that we're taking a look at right now. There is a World Cup in progress and it's the fifa u20 world cup and we had to touch on this because unfortunately usa took on japan in a group d finale and they had some scenarios coming into play here with group d and unfortunately a, they suffered a 3-1 loss in this uh in this group day uh, group d decision day type of scenario lisa 
Yeah, this um the the U20 Women's World Cup is incredible soccer. So for those that haven't been watching, although the US is now out, they are knocked out after this loss. Um it, it's still incredible soccer to watch. So tune in and and watch these games happening. But for the US U20, this 3-1 loss to Japan was hard to watch almost it, it was the talent that the u.s has on yeah. this team is incredibly high and and they just fell a little bit short against this japanese side who is also a uh, reigning champions of the u20 women's world cup they won in 2018 but this group d finale um it was ultimately zero zero at halftime and the first half was incredibly evenly matched between these two sides the u.s had some chances ali senator a usa forward she had a great opportunity a shot from about the penalty spot that really could have set the tone for this game in the first half especially for the u.s uh, but in the second half japan gets on the board first and and it was a turnover a counterattack moment a breakdown on the united states side that japan Japan just capitalized on and ended up scoring this one. Then 12 minutes later, Japan doubles their lead. They end up getting a second goal. It was off a set piece, a corner kick for this second goal. Um, and the U.S. just looked to be deflated. I mean, 12 minutes apart to get two goals against. Um, but the U.S. does get one. The, the final ends three to one. So the United States does get a goal in the 70th minute. Um, Alyssa Thompson, she gets the assist on a cross to Simone Jackson. It was Jackson's first goal of the World Cup tournament, but then 84th minute, uh, Japan gets their third and final uh, header goal. It was, this goal had a lot of controversy. It was initially called offside. Then they went to a VIR decision. Uh, but ultimately the goal counts. It's good three to one. But in terms of like, the statistics in this match, uh, although like just watching from the naked eye, you could see, I think that the first half was very evenly matched and the second half maybe had the upper hand to the Japanese side, but both teams had 12 shots on goal, three corner kicks, but Japan was just a bit more clinical. So Japan finishes first in the group. Netherlands finished second in the group, both J Japan and the Netherlands advance and the United States used 20 side is knocked out of the U-20 World Cup. Uh, pretty devastating. This was um, a great chance for the U-20 team. It's very sad for them, but the future is bright for those players that are in college oh, yeah. and heading into the NWSL in their next couple of years, and I'm sure we'll see a handful of them uh, playing at the national team senior level before long. Yeah, most likely. I mean, yeah. there's a couple of them already playing playing pro, right? Whether it's uh, Jaden Shaw or uh, Olivia Moultrie. Quite frankly, I I believe Alyssa Thompson looks good enough to to perhaps maybe yeah. make a, a choice right for for herself uh, moving forward. And I think when you look at these types of of competitions, the the World Cups, you know, sometimes the the luck of the draw kind of comes comes back to get you i mean this was not an easy group to 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 get no. out of and and sort of seeing uh the team's performance against you know netherlands and then having to go up against uh japan you know you'd have wondered if uh if just maybe this was going to be a, a really tough group and it, it turns out it really did shake out that way uh but i, I would say like even looking at some of the play um, throughout throughout this, you know, from the U20 team, um, there's a lot there. I'm, I'm with you, Lisa. I think there's a lot of uh, promising things there. I don't think that this finish is, you know, representative of the talent that was on this U20 team. Unfortunately, that's soccer. That's soccer at its, you know, one of its highest levels. And yeah. um, at the end of the day, that's how things uh, shake out. So, um, you know, uh, we're going to probably get a chance to see a lot of these players like you mentioned um go back to their uh, collegiate programs uh and be able to sort of keep up with them and follow them there and uh some of them will get to watch in an nws action as well and that's also uh, equally exciting so uh congrats to to the team for for you know representing the the crest and, and hopefully we get to continue to see uh more success for them 